So as you go across here, the first guy is Farrell. Farrell is the precursor for the French Reformation before Calvin. So Farrell is, um, he's born in 1489 and he lives until 1565. And he was much more of a firebrand than Calvin was. Calvin was, was much more systematic in his thought. He was much more organized. So Farrell would be to the French like Zwingli was to the Swiss or like Luther was to the Germans. And so he was the one that was going and, and basically stirring up trouble. But he's also most known for is persuading Calvin to stay in Geneva. When he, he meets Calvin, Calvin is, is fleeing from France and he's looking to go back to Basel where he'd been. And so he ends up coming through here because he gets deterred and he runs into Farrell and, and Farrell, in Calvin's words, then Farrell who was working with incredible zeal to promote the gospel, bent all his efforts to keep me in the city. And when he realized that I was determined to study in privacy in some obscure place and saw that he gained nothing by entreaty, descended to cursing and said that God would surely curse my peace if I held back from giving help at a time of such great need. Terrified by his words and conscious of my own timidity and cowardice, I gave up my journey and attempted to apply whatever gift I had in defense of my faith. So what Calvin wanted to be is he wanted to be the scholar, he wanted to be the professor, he wanted to sit around and write books. He had already written institutes by this point and that's what he wanted to do. And Farrell says that's not where what's important. The producing of pa papers is not what's important. What's important is the Church of Jesus Christ and what's important is the people and not the writing. So even though Calvin did all these writings, this is where Calvin really, when he confronts, when Farrell confronts him, this is where Calvin stops being the academic and starts to be the pastor. And he's actually a very, very skilled pastor. Farrell ends up staying, spending a lot of time here with Calvin, but he affects Switzerland, broader Switzerland, more than Calvin does. But to, to give you Farrell's history, he starts in the University of Paris. And the University of Paris is kind of the leading university in Europe. And so when Farrell's there, he's learning all the same things that, that Erasmus held, right? That the church needs to be reformed, that he's learning humanism, and he's learning that you should reason everything out. And so his positions are very, very similar. But there's a, a bishop, Brossonet, who ends up starts to becoming reformed and takes these reformations. And, and he appoints Luther to be a priest, and that he's a priest under him, and gives him a diocese. And then this bishop, because he's so reform-minded, he ends up kind of gathering all the, all the reform-minded people in France around him. So one bishopric in France basically gets all the reform-minded people. But then persecution starts, because one person, Farrell in particular, hears the teachings of Luther. Farrell is in the same generation as Luther, but he hears the teaching of Luther, he believes the teaching of Luther, and so there's these people that have gathered with the Erasmus view, which is the church needs to be reformed, and the Luther view comes in, and Farrell starts to preach very boldly the gospel to the point where persecution starts. As soon as persecution starts, or very shortly after persecution starts, the bishop who has been, been protecting them and gathering all the reformers in, in France together, he ends up turning against the Reformation. And then he starts to persecute those who, including Farrell. But Farrell continues to preach. He continues to hide out. He preaches in the, you know, the mountains and in the Dauphine. He has a, a great influence in one state in France and really is, is the bold preacher, right? He's the one that is not afraid to, to charge into the fire. And so that's kind of Farrell. So Farrell, like I said, he's kind of in the same generation, the same class as Luther and Zwingli. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.